This meeting is being recorded. Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus and today I'm with Dr. Julia Connor to learn all about her new book. Greetings and welcome, Julie. How are you? I'm well, thank you for having me, Hercules. I appreciate the time. I'm holding up my new book today. It's called the United States of Friendship, Pen Pals of 9-11. Wow. T tell us about that. That sounds exciting. I was very excited when I saw the cover and uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to learning more about it. Yes, I'm really excited to talk about it, actually. Um, it was a little challenging to write because, you know, kind of going back to September 11th, 2001 is, you know, it's hard because uh, there's so many things that you don't realize you remember uh so vividly you know but um basically it's actually an inspirational tale uh i was a new york city teacher during 9 11. uh i was uptown in washington heights area and that's up by the george washington bridge i was living in tenafly at the time and uh i taught third grade that day um and as as everyone knows it's the beginning of a school year so I didn't know my students all that well at that point. And what happened is this is before internet, before, you know, more widespread cell phone usage. And um, I had a, a teacher come into the classroom and just let me know that an airplane went into a building downtown and we assumed it was some sort of mistake. And then as the hour would go on, you know, kids started getting picked up. Another teacher came in and said, oh, no, it's a second building. And, you know, the second tower, a second airplane. And we knew we were under an attack. So it was a very scary day. And we, when we went back to school, this third grade class of mine, a few days later, I opened my mailbox and I received a package of letters that was for third grade students in the New York City classroom. And those letters were written by third grade students in Illinois. And they were letters of comfort. And uh, I opened it up and I got a letter from the teacher and each of my students got a letter from these other students. And it was just pure coincidence that these letters ended up in my mailbox because it was literally addressed to any third grade classroom, any, any public school, New York City, New York. Uh, apparently later I found out that the teacher, her name is Elaine Maraska, she had gone to their local post office and they went into like a book that was a book of, of zip codes just and they picked one out of their New York City zip codes and they picked Broadway because they, you know, obviously have heard of Broadway, and then it ended up my address of Broadway, my school. And then I was the third grade teacher that they put it in, but there was other third grade teachers in my school. You know, every, every building is pretty large in New York. Anyway, so I couldn't believe what I was opening. Uh, and this was, again, after having such a horrible you know, experience, so traumatizing. And just if I could share with your viewers here, sure. these, are, these are some pictures that my husband took. He was working in construction when he was uh, in the, somewhere in the twenties. Um, and uh, he was on a rooftop and he took those photos and we ended up using them for the book. So it was a very obviously, you know, a community in mourning, and, uh, you know, our nerves were very frayed. But when I got these letters, um, I couldn't really believe it. And then in, our, in the book, which is about the story, we even have a copy of one of the letters. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, it, it, and so then what, what we ended up doing was we wrote back. And as luck would have it, this very special friendship, you know, arose after such a, a difficult, you know, horrible experience, we realized that at that moment in time, and if I could just, you know, as I said, it wasn't like the easiest book to write because it, 
it does take you back to obviously a lot of bad memories. But what really was remarkable to remember is how we were so united. And what I try to convey to people now who really might not remember 20 years ago is everybody felt like they were New Yorkers, New Jerseyites. Everybody felt like they were Americans. And it was the fact that this rural community was reaching out to us. It mm -hmm. really was um, heartening. So as we started to write, we got letters back and we wrote letters back and forth and it just, it was a snowball. Um, you know, my students got to learn about kids who had horses in their oh, backyards. Wow. I know. Um, and so what ended up happening was our story kind of captured the imagination and we ended up in the New York Times and we ended up on the Today Show wow. as one of those kind of human interest stories. Or? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to. I, I don't want to be insensitive to be like, um, like, like any positive result would come out of tragedy, but that, but this was actually a, an area of connection and that, you know, was something that we could celebrate, of course, you know, and, um, and so, yeah, we ended up on the Today Show, New York Times, local papers, and at the end of the year, she got to visit, this other teacher got to visit me and my students in New York. And at the beginning of the next year, because our, our teaching schedules, our school years are different in different states, mm -hmm. I got to visit her and her oh, classroom. So like in here in the book, you'll see that's a, a, a reprint of an article in their paper that says, thank you from New York, you know, Big Apple teacher, visit circle center so i was this big apple teacher this was her visiting me in my very urban school and uh, somewhere around the pandemic again we've kept up for over 20 years at least holiday cards and um and we always we did an annual phone call on 9 11 to say what's been going on in our lives and she's since retired and somewhere around the pandemic, I get a call from her and she was like, you know, I've been working with a publisher on a different book, but I came across the box of the memorabilia of that year. You know, do you think I sh can approach my publisher to see if this was print worthy? And I said, okay, sure. And uh, we, we got the word back that it really was. And they were really eager to run with it. And I have to say that one of the main motivators, if I, you know, if you remember what I just told you is that this was during the pandemic, Yes, we were so conscious that that was a time when a tragedy brought our country together mm -hmm. and we were experiencing a tragedy that was tearing our country apart. That's part, yeah. yeah. So that was, we said, we really need to record this in history. You know, I was a firsthand account of what it was like that day and what it was like in that aftermath mm -hmm. and what it felt like to get that comfort from others. You know, we wanted to get in a, on, on paper. And today, by the way, is National Teacher Appreciation Day. Isn't it's funny that our timing of talking today. <laughs> and uh, this is a story about two public school teachers who um gave a wonderful learning opportunity for their children but also more importantly an, a, a, an opportunity for the children to learn empathy uh, which is the thing i'm most passionate about and i've talked to you about this hercules in different environment you know in different interviews is the fact that my study my phd was about the um, issue of humane education which is teaching about kindness to animals yeah. In, yes. in classrooms and again it all comes back to empathy how do we help others have others not feel isolated we are more strong as a country when we're united so we're very proud to have this book uh done and it's officially you know out there now and um i i just wanted to let people know about it and i, I appreciate the time 
to speak well, about it. I'm, I'm honored. You're you're definitely a person of heart. I've known you since uh, I returned uh, to Penafly after very many years of being away, and you were actually the first person to extend their hand in uh, friendship, and I always appreciated that. And uh, you are an excellent council person, uh, and you're very principled, and uh, it, it's a very good thing to have you on the, the council, and you're still very involved in all of your teaching and in all of your humane efforts uh, toward animals. Uh, so where can I get this book? Is it on Amazon? Uh, um, is it in our local bookstores? So uh, it's not in the local bookstores um, at this moment, because I think it probably needs to get a little bit more um, with, with traffic online, most likely. Okay. But it's available on Barnes and Noble walmart and uh, amazon um so if people do buy it it is uh, i would i would ask that they maybe leave a favorable review because maybe we can start getting it into some bookstores uh you know brick and mortar ones that's it's available the only thing i would see on amazon because i don't know about their algorithms they were uh if you post um if you put in julie o'connor that's like an easier way to get to United States of Friendship, Pen Pals of 9-11. If you put in that title there, I don't know, that's, it's a weird thing about Amazon, but definitely available on Amazon. So you'll find me. Uh, but, but I would say that if you Google United States of Friendship, Pen Pals of 9-11, the Barnes and Noble link will come up, the Walmart link will come up, and all these other third party sellers will come up. But if you're looking for it on Amazon, just it might take a little bit. So you might want to put in Julie O'Connor and I'm like the fifth one down or something. And you'll you won't you won't miss this uh, cover. It's a it's no, it's a very distinct and recognizable cover. How about uh, at, at our local libraries? Because uh, you're a, a new local author and uh, the libraries uh, host events where people can come in and uh, hear presentations of the book. I can see that happening uh, all over uh, the area. And I think the yes. does something like that too. The uh, Rotary uh, does uh, things like that. So uh, uh, let, let, let's go on tour here. <laughs> and, uh... Yes, that's my official uh, kickoff of the tour is your show actually, Hercules. I so I, so I'm, I'm going to, to be doing that. And I, I have to say that it is a great gift um, especially for schools and any young people, um, the ones born after 9-11. This is great about children empowerment and how you can help others in crisis. Right now we have Ukraine, we have people in Afghanistan, they're suffering all over. The fact that eight-year-olds can reach out and help and, and bring comfort is a message of empowerment. And it's a very gentle way of explaining that day and, and what hate can lead to actually. It is not a depressing book, it's an inspiring book. So I really, really, I have to say it's, it's a great little gift you can buy too. Very fast read too. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to uh, reading it and uh, then having you back on to ask you lots of uh, questions. Awesome. Oh, one more thing I wanted to tell you was that, um, in fact, uh, she, I should have said this, she wrote uh, what was going on with her in the red, and I wrote what was going on with me in the blue. So it's a really interesting way we put it together. So very, very cool. So what's next? I'm sure you're going to write more books. I think that what's next for me is probably um, going back to my humane education um, studies and trying to put that into a more teacher friendly book and um, get more of that research out there. Since I think that the best way for us to um, educate children to be kinder and uh, just wanna help give the teachers the tools. But I, I'm not sure I have anything quite as exciting that it's happened to me other than this event, but we'll see. <laughs> 
you're a council person. <laughs> you, you, you become the voice of the people in our community. I think that's uh, awesome. I've, I've watched your star rising uh, for about a decade now and it's risen and your sun shining in our firmament. So I think uh, your journey uh, would be a, a phenomenal thing to read as well. Oh, thank you. I, I you know, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I would say that being on the council, has, it's really been an education for me. Um, at a stage where, you know, it, it's nice to learn new things, right? <laughs> I'm always learning. I'm a, I'm a perpetual student. I was back to school many times. I would say that I try, I try to use my position. Well, I do use my position exclusively to speak for um, the people in the town. Uh, I have no uh, vested interest in any of it, it you know, personal interest, mm -hmm. other than the fact that I live in the town. So I think that when people watch me, hopefully they're, they're seeing themselves reflected. That would be my goal. Well, you're, you've attained your goal and uh, here's to many more goals in the future. Um, so I will post links. This will post on uh, uh, Facebook by tomorrow morning. Uh, and I'll include links uh, to, uh, um, to Amazon and let me see where else I can find uh, things written on the book. And yeah. um, is there a way people can contact you? Would you prefer that be through Facebook also or by, uh, is there any other way you'd like for me to put a link uh, to? Um, so I am the educational director for the Animal Protection League of New Jersey, and I would be happy to, um, to provide that email as well, especially for any, you know, inquiries about this type of stuff, because it's, you know, it's all related. I'll put a link to that as well. Julie, you're an amazing individual. We're very lucky to have you in our uh, community. And uh, through this book, you'll be reaching communities uh, throughout the world. And uh, it's a very good thing. I wish you lots of success uh, with this venture and with all your other ventures to come. Thank you for having me, Hercules. And one more question before we go. Uh, you are someone who follows their heart. You're someone who follows their dreams. You're someone who makes things happen. Uh, a lot of people have dreams, a lot of people have things in their heart, but they don't take any steps. So I admire people who actually go ahead and do something. Um, what advice do you have to people who might want to do something, who might want to make a difference, who might want to uh, make a contribution, but they're, they're afraid to? Well, I will tell you as a veteran, um, you know, a veteran activist and a veteran uh, person involved with nonprofits and charities, there is such a need that even if you had wanted to start um, just by, you know, making calls for an organization, or if you're worried about interactions or doing tablings for groups, perhaps they just need their database cleaned up when it comes to their members. If you reach out and, and start the ball rolling in the way that you're comfortable, the organizations would be so happy to, to get that help. Be part of the solution. I mean, I know that you know, this Sunday is Mother's Day, but next Sunday I'll be tabling all day at Overpeck Park, um, you know, with Animal Protection League. They, they always need people to man tables at these different events. That's just one group and, and one example. But um, if you're not comfortable with, with, you know, sitting and manning a table and giving out literature, maybe you're comfortable in one of those other things um, that we talked about, like databases or um, web, website maintenance. But I would say that if you wanna be part of the solution, then you have to do just that. You have to, take some steps to do it. And I, I was not a person who necessarily wanted to be on the council myself, but I was looking at the fact that um, I, would, I would have something to offer. So it really wasn't right for me 
to do the comfortable thing at that time, which would be to, to not be on the council, you know, cause I do work full time it, and I am a mom. It's challenging, but I just kind of asked myself that question that I know people have heard, which is if not me, then mm-hmm. who? So you have to do something. And if anybody is interested, you know, or, or else we're part of the problem. If you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. Because uh, I assure you that the uh, illiberal forces are, are not resting on their laurels. They are quite active. So um, I would just say that if anyone is interested in animal protection, they can reach out to me, uh, you know, with the web, with the email you provide. But also, you know, if you have interest in uh, nature preservation, there's the lovely, you know, Demarest Nature Center, Tenafly Nature Center, always looking for volunteers and anything political, from, you know, uh, intersectionality of, you know, dealing with race issues, feminist issues. Um, if any, any direction that the world is going in, if you're not comfortable with it, uh, then you are gonna, it, it does behoove you to, to reach out and to try, because I'll tell you, if you don't, um, then you're, you're going to be very depressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's depressing, the world can be depressing, but it's far more depressing if, uh, if you're not trying. And, and that's very true. And I could vouch for what uh, Julie said. For a period of time, I had uh, some free time and I applied it towards the, uh, the animal protection. And we went to demonstrations. We spoke to politicians. We made numerous podcasts. We met very many people at gatherings. So it was a very busy time and uh, the presence was felt wherever we were. So uh, whether you get involved with one of uh, Julie's uh, crusades or one of your own, uh, go out there, make a difference. Uh, if, if nothing else, call your local uh, representatives and tell them how you feel. And this way they, they know and they might be able to take an action. Julie is always. It is a pleasure and an honor to be speaking with you. Uh, Thank you for coming on the show. I'm greatly honored that you announced uh, this new um, adventure here, and I wish you the greatest success with it. Thank you. You too. And thanks to everybody who tuned in. Until next time, this is us wishing you joyous journeys and amazing adventures. Have an awesome day.